All right. I think we're good. I think this is on. This is a big moment for me. It's my first CES. It's also my first tech event in general. And it's also the first trip of 2024. There's, there's a lot of firsts going on right now, but I just want to say thank you. Like, seriously, thank you. I appreciate you because none of this would have been possible without your support. And I'm able to cross off such a huge milestone. And yeah, I, I just can't say thank you enough, but we got to go. We got to catch the flight, head over to Las Vegas. CES 2024. Here's my experience and everything that I thought was cool at this year's event. So let's go. The very first thing I wanted to do was just take this all in. There's a lot going on here, almost too much, and there's just so many cool pieces of tech and of course AI just sprinkled into every little corner possible. And just walking around and seeing everything at first glance really was an experience within itself. My first stop, like many others, was here at LG. By far the coolest and probably most highlighted product was their new signature OLED T, which is a transparent 4K OLED display. I'm not exactly sure how useful this is gonna be in an average home, but I'm excited to see just how far and where this tech can go. LG also had some other displays like this smart monitor, which reminded me a lot of the Samsung M8, as well as this briefcase or suitcase, which housed a display inside. I think this might be one of the coolest things LG had because I can definitely see myself carrying this around with me with like a Mac mini or Mac studio for the sole purpose of it just being bizarre and pretty cool. Lastly, LG had some projectors to showcase, which looking at how small and compact this overall package is, I can definitely see this being an extremely popular product. We're here at Hisense, we're about to get a personal tour, so let's go check it out. Okay, so I love OLED. But honestly, Hisense kind of has me switching over to Team Mini LED here because of these new displays that they're showcasing within their ULEDX line. These are hands down some of the best screens that I've ever looked at, and these are the world's first 40,000 local dimming zone mini LED TVs with black levels in contrast on par with OLED, but with the advantage of reaching 10,000 nits of peak brightness in some use cases. And if you go ahead and pair that with their brand new wireless speaker system, which introduced Dolby Atmos Flex Connect, you're looking at a movie theater quality experience in your home. And speaking of movie theater, Hisense has this 8K Sonic Laser TV offering an 8K picture quality with a peak brightness of 2000 nits and achieves 10 times the contrast over traditional laser TVs. Lastly, the lineup of Canvas TVs, taking the Samsung approach to the home design, blending technology with art and personalization, with the zero gap wall mount, it sits flush against the wall, integrating effortlessly into any sort of living space. Hisense is really coming into 2024 strong, and I'm definitely going to be checking out some of their displays this year. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, the Apple guy going to check out the Samsung booth. That's a little weird. But honestly, let me tell you something even weirder, and that's after messing around with a few of their products, such as the Galaxy Book 4, Tab S9, and Galaxy S23 Ultra, I'm genuinely interested in checking out some Samsung devices in depth. Samsung also had a gaming section full of their display tech, and I also had a chance to test out this racing sim, which featured the Odyssey G9 display, and I'm kind of mad that this was my first time experiencing a racing sim, because I'm not too sure how it gets any better than this. Like this display was massive and it was so immersive. I really did feel like I was driving the car, especially with just how bright the display got when the sun reflected off of different surfaces. As I kept wandering around the CES show floor, I landed at the Sony booth. They had a cool camera rig presentation and even showed off the PlayStation 5 in some new colors, but nothing really that new. Right next to it, I swung by the Canon booth and they didn't really have anything that new either, but it was pretty cool to check out the cameras and setups that they've been using in big Hollywood movie productions. A booth where there was some new tech being introduced was over at Ugreen, which if you guys have seen any of my previous videos, then you know I absolutely love them. They make some of, if not the best chargers for any and all of your devices, but they are now entering the world of network attached storage, AKA a NAS, and I am beyond excited for this. I don't know too much about it in terms of the specs, but if it's anything as good as their chargers, this is gonna be one of the best NAS solutions on the market. My last stop at the LLVC was the company who needed their own spot outside the building, which was Google. Now I mentioned earlier that Samsung was making me think of trying an Android, but Google, well, 
Google is kind of making me think I need to try an Android. The Google booth was also full of Samsung devices, which was also pretty cool to see as it was just kind of Android as a whole opposed to specific companies. But yeah, seriously, after messing around with a bunch of Android devices, I think it's time that I take a peek over the Apple walled garden and try out some new tech. I forgot my external SSDs, which means we're going to be splitting this into two days now. So we're going to hit the Venetian today, and then I also got to hit up an Apple store or something to pick up an external SSD so I can offload all my footage and whatnot. But either way, nonetheless, CES 2024 day two now. Let's go. The Venetian Expo was actually a lot cooler than I was expecting as there was a lot of small brands and startup companies that were just showcasing new products and overall there was just a lot more little gadgets and accessories. It's also just really cool seeing the faces behind the brands and companies that I use and typically purchase from. Like here at the Anchor booth where they showcased a bunch of travel chargers and power banks and also updated all of their devices to now support the new Qi2 wireless charging standard. And same goes with ESR which I did get a chance to check out some of their products just a a couple months back and they have now switched everything over to the Qi2 standard. I also got to check out this MagSafe wallet which looks pretty simple and minimal and honestly that's a good thing but it's also packing a bunch of cool features like being able to turn into a phone stand, of course hold your cards, and it also has find my capabilities. Before going over to the independent booths I had to make sure I went over to see one of the channel sponsors Moft. Moth was showcasing a bunch of their products such as their wallet, phone cases, tripod stand, and a bunch of desk and laptop accessories, as well as just products that I haven't ever seen before. I'm really excited to see what Moft has planned for this year, and I don't want to spoil or give away anything too much because I'm going to be working with them to bring you some really cool videos this year. Now this portion of the day was really exciting for me because I haven't ever really messed around with anything that revolved around gaming. Like yes, I use a PS5 and I've used consoles since I was a kid, but I've never gone as far as to have a dedicated PC or crazy monitor setup or anything like that. So I was really excited to go in and check out MSI with all of their laptops as well as their handheld PC. And honestly, I think I'm starting to understand the whole gaming PC thing now. Like even with just a brief amount of time that I had messing around with these devices, it really kind of went and showed how different gaming PCs are in relation to the consoles. But where I was really blown away was when I checked out the AMD as well as Gigabyte spots where they had a bunch of crazy immersive desktop setups. Unfortunately, I didn't really take a look at the specs in terms of the hardware, which I know is like a rookie mistake, but I was honestly just that blown away by what's available in terms of monitors as well as PCs in general. And if there's one thing that I've taken away from visiting these booths, is that I might have to actually try and build my own PC someday. Which I seriously need to take this in for a second, as I've always been an Apple guy, iPhones, iPads, Macs, etc. And the one thing I took away from this entire CES event was that I now need to try out an Android phone as well as a PC. But all that really cool tech aside, I now have to go pick up an external SSD so I can start offloading my footage and get started on some editing. Luckily, the Apple store at the Caesar shops had some external drives available, which was really my only hope and finding one. I ended up going with the LaCie external SSD, which unfortunately was a little bit on the pricey side in comparison to something like the Samsung T7, but I had no other choice and I guess this kind of adds to my trip experience and I can also have a memory drive with all my footage from CES, so I guess it's really not that bad. With all of that out of the way, it's time to head back to the hotel, offload my footage, get a little bit of editing done, and wrap up this CES experience. That's a wrap on CES 2024, my first CES. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope to see you guys next year. And until next time, peace.